a year since Misha Tate last fought in the Strike Force cage, but says her knee injury is fully recovered. While she may give away size to Kunin, Misha believes her speed will prove to be too much for the champion. Marlos Kunin, the female MMA pioneer who has competed all over the world is not easily intimidated. The pre-fight banter has only fueled her desire to retain her belt by making the biggest statement of her career in the cage tonight. I want to be an example. If they see me fight and see, well, she's a normal girl. If she can do it, I can do that too. It will be a great goal to achieve. I'm not going out there with any other vision in my mind than winning. She has something that I want, and I'm gonna take it. Marlos Kunin, an amazing submission win. Misha Tate waiting in the wings. I've been ready to face Marlos for over a year now. Winning this title is finally right at my fingertips. If you become a champion, you know everybody wants your belt. I really works for it, I, I'm really owning it. That's why I will not give it to anyone. Since I've been wrestling for such a long time, that's really gonna help. She doesn't have too much of a natural scrambling ability. And there's Tate securing another takedown. You have to adapt to your opponent. I can't do the stand-up, I can't do the wrestling, I can't do the ground. I plan on dominating the fight, whether it's 30 seconds or five minutes. She better be ready for the same. She can be determined as much as she wants to, but this belt is mine, and I will not give it to her. And now, please welcome to the cage, Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Challenger, Misha Tate. Misha Tate, 5-0 and in her last five fights. She won a one-night tournament, two fights in August to earn a title shot. Yeah, but that was August of 2010, Gus. It has been almost a year since she has competed. Uh, she was supposed to face Marlis Kunin earlier this year, suffered the knee injury two weeks before the title fight. But she says a cage corrosion will not be a factor tonight. She feels that this is her destiny since she started training mixed martial arts when she was just 17. You see her boyfriend, Brian Carway, with her. They decided to leave their native Pacific Northwest last year, went to Sacramento, training now at Ultimate Fitness and Team Alpha Male with former WEC featherweight champion Uriah Faber. Misha's a lone professional female, and everyone says she is just as tough as any of the guys. Well, she trains with the boys, and rightfully so, she was on the boys wrestling team for four years. Her key tonight, stick with that wrestling and aggressive takedowns. She's got to grind out her opponent with ground and pound, her relentless ground and pound. Stick to her roots and get them takedowns. And now here's the submission master and defending champion, Marlous Kunin. Marlos Gunin has submitted her last two opponents while on her back and taking a beating. And tonight, she faces a superior wrestler. Yes, that she does, and um, Marlos Gunin admitted, yeah, some of her weaknesses were exposed, but she's worked on her takedown defense. She's worked on her guard defense. She is a female MMA pioneer who's been training with her coach, Martin Diong, since she was 14 when she first took uh, martial arts for self-defense. She's had a career that's spanned over a decade and now that she has ascended to the top of the mountain she thrives on being the hunted frank everybody wants your belt when you're on top her key to the case tonight is avoid the mount we saw Carmouche last time mount her multiple times took a lot of energy out of her striking game and out of her strategy game and yes she was able to finish her but i don't know if she can finish misha tate if tate gets in the mount and puts a beating on her the tale of the team Marlos Kunin, the champion, taking on the challenger, Misha Tate, in the Bantamweight division. And the number that jumps out to me is the height advantage of Kunin here. That's either going to play into her favor with striking, or it's going to allow Misha Tate to slide underneath her with the takedown. Former Strike Force Women's 135-pound champion Sarah Kaufman already holds a win over Misha Tate. She lost her title to Marlis Kunin. She wants the winner of tonight's title fight, and she will be watching with vested interest.
Time now for the official introductions. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. All right, fans, here we go. Strike Force M1 Global and Showtime presents five five minute rounds for the Strike Force Women's World Batam Weight Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner. Standing at five feet six and one half inches, she weighed in at 135 pounds. A rustling standout with a record of 11 wins and two losses. Please welcome the popular challenger fighting out of Sacramento by way of Tacoma. Introducing Misha. Take down Tate. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner, standing at five feet eight and one half inches. She weighed in at 135 pounds. With a background in Shooto, her record stands at 19 wins, four losses, with three knockouts and 14 submissions to her credit. Here is the women's MMA pioneer and defending strike force, women's world bantamweight champion from Amsterdam, Marlou. And our referee in charge of the action now to give instructions, Big John McCarthy. All right, ladies, this is for the Bantamweight Champion. Remember, I said about protecting yourself at all times, obey my commands at times. Fight clean, fight hard, fight fair. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Step back so you can start. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a game fit. I don't know if I've ever seen Marlis Kunin uh, sport this kind of demeanor. Marlis, step back. Thank you. You ready? You ready? Let's get up. Good and smiling at her. She's got to stop this takedown. She's going to work that game. She threw a big overhand right. Let Misha come underneath it. Does that bring anyone in the history of MMA submitted to a foot stomp? Don't grab the fish, Misha. Not yet. <laughs> it sure hurts, though. Conan doing a good job of putting her head under Misha Tate's. That's going to stop the takedown and the clinch position. This is where Kuna did not want to find herself in the early going, pinned up along the fence by the grappler, the wrestler, Tate. Kuna has the size advantage, but it's Tate that's being the aggressor in the early going. First round scheduled for five for the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. Left hook by Kunin, getting through. She trains at Golden Glory in Amsterdam with some of the world's best strikers. And there's a Muay Thai knee right up the middle from the plumb position. Looking for the choke already. Tina Kunin's 19 wins have come via submission. And finally a takedown by Tate. Tate has never been submitted. Marlou's Kunin very good on her back. That looked like Tate was ready to tap there. That's a pretty tight choke. Yeah. Kunin trying to sink it in. And Tate frees her head. Now Kunin's got to get back to that guard. Side control. For Tate. This 
This is where Coonan found herself for the majority of the fight, for the majority of the four rounds of her last title defense against Carmouche before pulling off the dramatic triangle choke win in round four. Tate neutralizing her right arm now. Nice trap by Misha Tate. And as you mentioned, Frank, Coonan has to stay out of the mountain. Gotta stay out of the mouth and these dominant side positions because carrying around Tate's weight is gonna make her very tired. Plus, getting damaged from there is gonna make her expend a lot of energy. Kuna raising her right leg there, trying to block the transition to mount by Tate. Cross-side position, I mean, we've said it before, Pat Militic, Frank, Boss Wooten, a lot more weapons at your disposal. You're able to distribute your weight. I think it's better controlling position, a better dominant position, cross-side than the mount. It's better for control, and it's better for submission. The mount's just a lot more intimidating because someone's sitting above you, patting on your face. Let go of the shorts, Misha. 50 seconds to go in the first round, scheduled for five. This is the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. Misha Tate, the challenger in pink and green. And the champion, Marlouz Kunin in black. Tate doing a good job of controlling the champion, dropping some hammer fists to the belly. Great job of control from side. Mount Kunin trapped. But again, very confident, very calm, cool, collected. She told us too against Carmouche, a lot of the shots weren't that damaging. She says when you've been in there against the likes of Chris Cyborg, everything else is peanuts, as she put it. And that's the end of the first round. Now, the Strike Force Heavyweight World Grand Prix continues with the semifinals Saturday, September 10th at 10.30 p.m. Josh Barnett fights Sergey Karatanov and Antonio Bigfoot Silva battles Daniel Cormier. Now, Cormier inserted into the tournament wide. Replacing the injured Alistair Overeem. And of course, we're watching women's title action tonight, September 10th. We'll see Jacare defend the middleweight title against Luke Rockhold. A great card coming your way September 10th in Cincinnati. You know what I mean? Just be smart on the ground, okay? The takedown from Tate. It was hard earned, but well worth it. She got her hips inside, cut the corner, was able to trip the knees out from Marlos Coonan, and she got caught in a bit of a choke for it. I thought she was gonna tap. She was able to drive her head forward and keep that position and ended up in a dominant side mount. Now the two ladies just go right at each other to start the second round. Scheduled for five, five-minute rounds. This is the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. The champion is in black, Marlus Kunin, 30 years old from Amsterdam, taking on the challenger, 24-year-old Misha Tate, fighting out of Sacramento, California, in pink and green. Tate living up to her moniker, takedown of the opening round, secured the takedown, was able to control from side mount. I gave her the opening round 10-9, Frank. I gave it to her as well. Kuna's doing some nice work with her knees here. Knee in the body. Trying to wear down the younger Misha Tate. What is Marlou's Kunin's strength? I think it's being well-rounded. Having good stand-up, having good submission ability, and then having a lot of experience. She's been in the game a long time. She knows what to do when she's mounted, side mounted, or when she's up on the fence or all tied up. Yeah, one of the most experienced female mixed martial artists. Uh, started her career in the land of the rising sun. A lot of uh, great female fighters out of Japan, and there now, looking for, wow, transitions to the back, looking for and the rear naked choke. She's in choke position right now. Tate climbs a fence. Kunin trying to get both hooks in. She's very dangerous from this position. Tate has only lost twice in her career. One via decision, one via knockout. Has never been submitted. But then again, she's never been in there with the likes of Marlos Kunin. Good body lock, figure four body lock. That's going to stop the hip Watch movement of Misha Tate. 
Yeah, the body triangle. It's almost like a boa constrictor wrapped around your midsection. How do you get out of this if you're Misha Tate? She's got to run her hips to her left and try to get her back flat to the mat. If your back is on the mat, then no one can be on your back. Crowd in Chicago chanting Misha's name, cheering on the American athlete. Conan should tee off on her right here. Get her to raise her hands up. Watch where the strike goes. What is the best way to escape from the body triangle? Because we've seen people submitted before. Now she lets it go, but I mean, what is the best escape out of that body lock? You gotta turn to your side and you gotta run your elbow up to your knee and unhook the leg. Then when you unhook the leg, you can slide yourself out. But as long as those feet are hooked, you're not going anywhere. A lot of very important hand fighting going on right now, Frank, especially for Misha Tate. Yeah, she's gotta keep the hands from going under her chin. And Kona doing a good job, seesaw and switching hands, looking for position. And now she comes with the strikes. That's what she needs to get the hands up and change the hand fighting game into a blocking game. Dire strikes here for Misha Tate. Kunin beginning to soften her up with some body blows again, attacking the head. Doing a great composer as she looks over to her corner yeah. for a little direction. <laughs> Again, a guy, Martin de Jong, who's been with her more than half her life. Started with her at 14. And here we are in 2011. The 30 year old Marlis Kunin looking to successfully defend the Strike Force women's bantamweight title for the second time against number one contender Misha Tate. Tate's trying to unhook her feet there. Got her back mount, and there's some ground and pound from the back. Big right hands by Kunin. Watch it down the road, be careful where it's going. 42 seconds to go in the second round. This is the Strike Force win, Women's Bantamweight Championship. The champion with a stellar performance in the second round. She's trying to push that hand down, advance the legs up. Put herself into a triangle choke position, a reverse triangle choke position. And more than half of this fight has now been where Kunin is, I think, at her best. On the ground, over three minutes of this round, and just slowly, meticulously trying to set Tate up for the choke, but time becoming a factor, and Tate will survive. Great second round for Marlous Kunin, the champion. And there's a young lady that's watching this fight tonight, looking forward to getting in with the winner. Here's Heidi Andral. That's right, Gus. She definitely is. Joining me right now, Sarah Kaufman, coming off of a victory over Liz Carmouche last week. Now, you actually have had a chance to fight both of these women, Misha Tate, back in the first Challenger show, and Marlos Kunin took the belt from you. What's your prediction in this one tonight, and what have you seen so far? Well, so far, I've seen what I thought Misha would do is bring Marlos to the cage, try and take her down, and try and grind it out, and Marlos was able to reverse that in the second. And I'm hoping that Marlos gets this win, probably a decision, and then I'm able to rematch her for the title. I was just going to ask you, would you rather avenge your loss or, or fight Misha? And you've answered it there. Let's go to a replay of what we've seen in this round so far. There's Marlos Kunin with the takedown and going for the submission over Misha Tate. Anything surprising here? Obviously, that's Marlos's game. It, you know, it's not surprising. I'm sure Marlis is really prepared for that. I'm expecting to see some clinch knees and, and Marlis using her length as well. But in tight, I know that Marlis is probably expecting to get taken down. All right, well, we'll see if they can do it here in the third. We'll send it back to you guys, cage side. Well, thank you very much, Heidi. Third round scheduled for five in the Women's Bantamweight Championship. The champion is Marlis Kunin, who comes out in the third round with some very good leg kicks. And the challenger, Misha Tate, 
in pink and green. Yeah, she shut out Tate when it came to power strikes of the second round, 20 to nothing. And while I gave Tate the opening round, it was uh, the champion's round in the second stanza. I have it even after 10 minutes, Frank. I got it even too. And I also think that Kunin has got her number here with the leg kicks and that overhand right. Oh, nice takedown as she caught the kick that time. Very good job by Misha Tate. Anticipating the leg kick, catching it, and using it to her advantage. This is her strength right here. Terrific wrestler, as you mentioned, on the boys' team in high school growing up, won the coaches' award at her high school for her superior wrestling ability with the boys. But we have seen Kunin start slow in her previous two fights when she defeated the aforementioned Sarah Kaufman, who Heidi Andrell just spoke to in between rounds. She was being controlled and dominated before pulling out the arm bar from underneath. And of course, in one of the uh, biggest comebacks of the year after being controlled for three rounds, she came back and defeated Karmush via triangle choke. Kunin with the underhook, trapping the right arm of Misha T. So I guess what I was trying to say, Gus, is she's very comfortable from this position while Tate has to really, the onus is on her to try to improve position, try to ground and pound, try to score points from here because Kunin can, can get you from any position when you're on the ground. And she's a champion. Well, she's got that over again. Then Tate finally releases. setting up a, a triangle attempt there. Always thinking one step ahead and you can see the communication. Always taking a look at her corner. Looking for advice. Well, Tate needs to posture up. She needs to get busy. Luna's doing a good job of keeping hold of her head. When she's not keeping hold of her head, hooking those arms. Big John will stand him up. Tate, hands down, breathing out of her mouth. Takes down Coonan once again. Coonan looking for the Kimura. From the full butterfly hooks here. Dropping some elbows as well. These ladies, great effort in the cage, but there's only one Chris Cyborg. The Strike Force women's 145 pound champion. Rumor has it she may be returning before the end of the year. One of the most impressive female athletes in the world. Mrs. Cyborg. She holds a win over Marlos Kunin. It was after that fight Kunin decided to try her hand at 135 pounds. So far, so good. She is the reigning champion, but she's been taken down twice here in the second round by Misha Tate. She's got to get her head out of the cage here. Bad positioning, although she's tying Tate up. 27 seconds remaining in the third round, scheduled for five for the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. The first round going to the challenger on top, Misha Tate. The second round going to the champion on bottom, Marlos Kunin. This round favoring the challenger. As we come to the end of three, title on the line. Oh, wow, big nice. flip. Reverse. Beautiful sweep at the end of the round by the champion. Tate went two for two in takedowns. Coonan outlanded Tate 11 3 in power strikes. You get tired every round, but you can recover because you're in shape. Right? You recover and, and here's Coonan with the power. That overhand right. She's keeping it cocked and ready. She's trying to find the range. 
Tate is taking it away with the takedowns. And Tate's not afraid to swing, but she's get, picking up those kicks. Easy takedown on that one, timing the kick of Marlos Kuhn, driving right in for a double leg takedown. And same thing, boat right under the right hand, turning the corner, bringing her knee up. Nice wrestling by Misha Tate. Way to follow through, get that dominant position. Fourth round scheduled for five of the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. And for Marlos Kunin, in her last fight, the fourth round turned out to be the round as she submitted Liz Carmouche. Well, she had that beautiful sweep at the end of round three. She also outlanded Tate 11 to three in power strikes. A very close round. I could see where the judges would give it to Tate because she was on top for the majority of the round, but she wasn't that effective from top position. They've spent 10 minutes and 10 seconds of the first 15 minutes on the canvas. And yet, I don't know, that last round, Frank, how did you score it? I don't know. That was a tough round to score. I think Misha Tate might have ran away with a bit of it, but I I'm leaning towards Kuna. She had the power strikes, she had the reversal. Yes, Tate was on top, but again, it wasn't very effective grappling from top position. We'll settle it over bocce ball. Oh, you want to go there again? I have a 29-28 for the champion. I could see it being the other way, though, as well by the three judges chosen by the Illinois State Athletic Commission. Tate driving Kunin into the fence. Ooh, nice stop. But right into the guillotine choke from Kunin. Tate's got a block though. She's driving her right shoulder down, taking the pressure off the choke. And she's crawling around the guard and getting the side mount of Marlos Kunin. How do you create space on the fence, Frank? You don't, that's why you gotta use the fence. You turn your body around, you get your feet up on it, you push off with your hand. That fence is like a, you know, traps you in a, a box and you can't get out. Brian Carway, Tate's boyfriend shouting out instructions at cage side. And Tate getting to side control now. Marlos has gotta run up that cage. You can run right up that cage, come out the back door here. And that's exactly what she's doing. You've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> you can hear Carway telling Tate that Kunin is getting ready to explode, anticipating the Launch off the fence and Tate defended it well. They're still in cross side position. Some elbows from the bottom by Kunin. See this time, this round with the takedown, I think Tate's done a better job. Knee on belly for Tate, trying to, oh, and she goes to the other oh, side. Another side choke. Arm triangle choke. She's got it in there. Kunin trying to block it by grabbing her leg. Just like Tate, Kunin has never been submitted. As he submits her! Submits her! Wow, what a performance by Misha Tate! And she takes the Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Championship. Misha take down Tate, taking a page out of the Golden Girl of Golden Glory's playbook. Tate is the new Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Champion. Wow! That dominant position, put her in submission ability. As she jumped right over the hips, slid that choke in. Misha Tate with the arm triangle choke of victory, her fifth win via submission, but her first via arm triangle choke, and it leads to her first Strike Force Championship, setting up a rematch with Sarah Kaufman, who's already defeated her. Wow. Here's the finish. 
Side mount, good control. Look at Misha's head is behind the elbow, behind the arm of Kunin. She slides over into the mount. Then once she's there, she keeps going all the way to the other side. Now the arm's trapped. She's got a figure four. She's got it locked, and she's driving that choke. You see Kunin trying to block it a little bit by getting that knee up, but she, Kunin is choking herself with her own arm because of this position. Here's another look, just textbook side choke position, driving that arm across her neck. Tate's arm is choking the other side. A beautiful submission hold. An emotional Misha Tate celebrating her first championship. She began her career in November 2007, and here on the final day of July 2011, Misha Tate is a Strikeforce Women's Bantamweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, with the time of three minutes, three seconds in round number four, an arm triangle choke ends this contest as the fighter taps out. She is the winner by way of submission. She is the new Strikeforce Women's World Bantamweight Champion, Misha Take Down. A new champion crowned here, right outside of Chicago. Misha Tate, congratulations on your world championship. Scott Coker, putting the belt around your waist. Can you give us an idea of what is going through your mind right now when you look back at your days wrestling on the boys wrestling team in high school? It made me tough, and uh, it's a big, huge reason why I'm here today. It was that toughness that got me through that fight. I mean, Marlos is no joke. Had a, a good start to my training camp, a rough finish, but that's what makes the heart of a champion right there. It's tough times. Tough times only make you tougher. How ironic you submit a submission specialist in Marlos Kunin to take the belt. I couldn't have asked for anything better. You know, most of her wins are by submission. She's never been submitted, and that's what I came here to do tonight. Can you, in your mind, go back and tell us what you saw and what allowed you to win this way? Uh, but having a big heart, you know, there's a couple times when I was down in here and she's really tough, but I told you that, told everyone I wasn't going to come in here with too much of a game plan. If I saw an opportunity, I was going to take it, and I did. So up next, Sarah Kaufman will challenge you for your world championship belt. That's the best thing I could ask for, second best, you know, chance to avenge a loss. Would you like to say thank you to anyone? Yes. Thank you to my friends, my family, my wonderful boyfriend, Brian Caraway, Team Alpha Male, uh, Yakima MMA, uh, uh, Victory Athletics, you know, those are all the gyms that got me here. And uh, thank you to all my sponsors, supporters, fans here. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Let's go back cage side. Hey, Frank, I think that Team Alpha Male in Sacramento might have to change its name to Team Alpha Male and Alpha Female, the new champion, as we go to the CompuStrike statistics. Look at the numbers, and what do you see? Well, it came down to dominant positions. Tate had three dominant positions. She was able to set up the side choke from one of them, and Conan threw a lot of power strikes, 36 power strikes to Tate's six, but it only takes one submission to end this game. The side choke finished off the champion. We got Misha, a new champion. take down Tate. So Celebrating as the new Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Champion as she submits Marlos Kunin via fourth round arm triangle choke. And now here's what's coming up on Showtime.